Hi there and welcome to Kingdom Life Footprint. I'm Debbie. And I'm John. Hope you enjoy this episode. So we thought we'd kind of do a bit of an introduction, I guess, into the kingdom. People yeah. who may not have heard us talk about this before mm -hmm. and where it came from in our lives and why we're so big on it today and why we think it's so important. Yeah. So in in Matthew chapter 4, there's a great there's a great few verses where we, it gets recorded of what Jesus' first kind of verbal words are. And it says, when Jesus heard that John the Baptist had been put in prison, he returned to Galilee. And there's a few verses in between. Um, and it says, from that time on, so after John the Baptist was in prison, it's almost like he handed the baton on to Jesus, because mm. that's what John the Baptist used to say, wasn't it? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Yeah. And then in this Matthew 4, Jesus said, uh, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And so it's almost like, John the Baptist's ministry finished and Jesus began with the mm. message streaming through about the kingdom. So for you, John, where where did it start? Where did this stuff about the kingdom start? And why do you think it's so important? Well, I think it, it began obviously many, many years ago because we read it and we're aware of Yeah. We're aware of those words you've just read, aren't we? The kingdom of God. But I guess I hadn't seen its importance with regard to a mindset until mm. more recent mm. times and I began to listen to uh, a few things you know with, that were pertaining to the kingdom of God and I realized perhaps we've missed something here mm. you know Jesus intent he spoke repeatedly about the kingdom and I was over 60 odd times you mentioned no, 160, 160 yeah times. yeah and I was thinking there has to be more to it than I've grasped personally. So I guess that's my journey. It began in Tanzania really a few years ago. Yeah. Um, and has continued since then, I would say, mm. up to a point where now I really see the importance of it. Yeah. And uh, it answers a lot of things that perhaps I couldn't answer, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, you know. I'm just thinking back, because obviously for me, I grew up in the church, and so that phrase, the kingdom of heaven is near. Mm -hmm. Like you just said, you read it so many times in the scripture, but I think because of the word kingdom, mm. you disassociate it with modern day living, don't you? So you imagine it's just something yeah. far out and out there. So for I think probably for me, digging into the kingdom and what yeah. it is, is, mm. is maybe a two or three year journey. And one of the things we did during lockdown was a series called Beyond the Door, which mm -hmm. we spoke about be, becoming born again, which is the most important yeah. thing you can do. Mm. But then, what happens after that when you go through that door? And we and we likened it to Narnia. Do you remember? Mm. We did it we, where they walk through the wardrobe mm. and they come into this incredible world. Mm. But it just looks like a wardrobe at first. Push through the coats and they come into this world. And that's how we began to see the kingdom. Of, and so, what does that mean for someone who is born again? Because you can't live in this kingdom. And unless you've gone through the door, uh, that's the of, entry point. That's the entry point. Jesus is the way. What well, Jesus is the only way to the Father. Yeah, John, and it says Jesus that. is the door. So yeah. So once we're born again, mm -hmm. we we automatically enter the kingdom of God. Yeah. Even if you didn't go to church, you'd be in the kingdom. Mm. But in my view, we've not understood the church's role. You know, and it goes without saying, I'm a church man. I'm all for church. Really, a church. Yeah, but I've I've recently began to see that the church <laughs> is a servant of the kingdom. The yes. church is not the be all and end all. We know that church means called out people, and it actually began in the Senate in Rome that the people who were in the Senate were the called out ones. So the church, in a sense, borrowed ecclesia, which is a Greek word. Uh, for church from a, a secular thing yeah so we know and have come to understand that and obviously we've always known church is not the building it's the people but the people who make up the church are kingdom citizens yeah. and and whereas you can feel satisfied if you like just by being a church goer like in in the worst sense it's a duty and oh i go to church once a week 
or you know, I go to church and I attend another meeting midweek or whatever. Kingdom citizen is an all lot more than that. Absolutely. And kingdom, I've come to know, derives from an existing invisible kingdom in heaven and God planting, if you like, a visible kingdom on earth. So they're one and the same thing. Mm. And and uh, we, we said last week, I think, Jesus said, about talked about the keys of the kingdom. Because what is not allowed in heaven, this excites me a lot, should not be allowed on yeah. earth. But only those who have kingdom dominion, kingdom citizens, can can fulfill that. Whatsoever is bound, whatsoever is loosed, yeah. is, is bound and loosed in heaven because it wouldn't be allowed there. So the church taking back dominion uh, that Jesus reinstated, obviously through the cross and through the resurrection, mm. then allows kingdom citizens to walk in dominion on earth over that which we should not just accept. And if you, and, and I think the I think we saw, well, I don't know if we talked about this last week, I think the, mm. one of the biggest um, things within Christianity is there's so many, so many ways you can believe, if you like, Yeah. to the point where mm. somebody would say they were a Christian, yeah. even if they just go to church, wouldn't they? So yeah, it, it, yeah. On a, on a, certainly traditional, go to not hospital, as many go to church now. Go to, yeah, 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 go to hospital and you're yeah. right, I'm a Christian, and without even really knowing, so you've, yeah. got, you've got that one extreme to the other extreme um, mm. where they totally believe yeah. the Word of God, and that's where we should all be aiming. Mm. So if, you, if you're grounded in that level of Christianity, yeah. that right now you are born again forever, when you die, and that shouldn't be until Jesus says, you're going to go to heaven. But So what are you going to do right now? And it's almost like we don't write rules because Jesus abolished the law. Obviously, he gave us commands to, to love, which we can't do this series without bringing that into it. But we, we set our own standards. Mm. So we like to watch the SAS training and the army training and the, the discipline and the... They have no choice about getting up at two a.m. and going mm. for a run or mm. going in the sea because they're going to be they're going to become part of a whole yeah. an army. So mm. there's it, you're in the army yeah. or you're not. Yeah. Whereas for us, from an in, eternal perspective, you're either in the kingdom or you're not. Yeah. But from a lifestyle point of view, in the areas that you should be taking de de battle in and victory in, mm. we've all got different belief systems on yeah. that. So um, we go to church, yeah. I've got a cold, I'll just have the cold, rather than thinking, hang on a minute, mm. I'm a kingdom citizen, there's no cold in heaven, so I'm going to call down from heaven on earth and not mm. put over this cold. Yeah, which I'm for some, it. I'm gonna challenge it. Yeah, for, for some that's just science mm. fiction because they can't, yeah. they don't make that link between the yeah. church and and life, do they? No. So it's a big, yeah. it's a big challenge. Well, but it's good. It's exciting. It, I've said recently, and it may have even said it in the introduction last week, that we're meant to be a visible result yeah. of kingdom yeah. living, but church as we know it is not producing that generally no. and I, I, I want to say again we are church people we lead a church but but we're not satisfied that we or what we observe generally is at a level that scripture says we can be at so we're asking questions yeah we're asking questions because of the promises of god that we're not seeing fulfilled right. uh, in in general church life and i believe this that the church in itself, because of its mindset, uh, is not able to produce life at that level, whereas the kingdom is. Yeah. And I want to say again, if, if people feel um, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, what's the difference? The, there is no difference. It's just that one determines location, which is the kingdom of heaven. So when Jesus uses kingdom of heaven, he's speaking about the kingdom of heaven, which is now on earth. Mm -hmm. And when he says kingdom of God, it's the government of yeah. God. Yeah. So they're one and the That's same it. thing. It's the, it's the government of God on earth. Now we're getting somewhere because if the church does not educate the believer 
into the government of God on their lives, which is not when you're in a church meeting or a prayer meeting. It's when you're at work. It's when you, how you treat your partner in life, how you bring up your children, choices that you make, how you uh, how you believe for a good job, mm. how you how you yeah. career minded. It covers everything. So the kingdom is meant to uh, is meant to convince believers that we we actually live in a kingdom now. Yeah which has staggering benefits, but without the government of God in our lives, we won't get those benefits. Yeah. So if we don't challenge church people, if we don't challenge believers with truth, then they're going to miss out, aren't they? Yeah. they they're not going to understand, as I didn't for years, that, that you could challenge what you said, yeah. even down to a cold, you yeah. know, because we've done it. We know what we're talking about on these things, but there was a time in our lives when we, we didn't. Wouldn't have done that. And and if you know that you know, faith begins at the known will of God. Faith begins. I heard an old preacher say that. Faith begins at the known will of God. Yeah. Right. So if you don't believe it's God's will to yeah. heal, you're not going to fight yeah, for that. You're not. You're not going to fight for a better job. You're not going to fight when your kids are running amok. No. You know, so on yeah. and so forth, yeah. because. You don't know that it's the will of God, no. that you can benefit right. with God and with God's government in your life, that in every area of your life. Absolutely. And to me, a mind shift to kingdom that says, now you're a kingdom citizen, born into it, by the grace of God, you've got to live as one. Yeah. And we know what scripture says, seek first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God no, and sense. his righteousness. Mm. So understanding kingdom, then living, as God wants you to live in that kingdom, yeah. is how you should live as a Christian. Definitely. And then you own the door to the promises and the benefits. So what we're saying is mm. his, his... And the authority. His gift of salvation is is completely unconditional. And we would believe that he, he won't take that back from you. It's a gift. It's a gift of eternal life in he paradise. He wants to perish, does he? Yeah. Mm. So, and after, so I, I, we've said it quite a few times that there'll probably be some surprises in heaven. Yeah. Of people who just cried out yeah. in a second before they died. Yeah. God hears and he wants mm. them in heaven. Yeah, amen. So that's unconditional. The way you live a life of victory is not unconditional because no. no. you have to play your part in that because the enemy is alerted once mm. you be, you become a Christian. Yeah. Before that, he, he couldn't care less how you live. Once a person becomes born again, he's only... His only tactic is to lie, kill and destroy. And that's mm. what he wants to do. Yeah. So he wants to keep as many believers living by this door, if, we, if you like. Mm. Intense, uh, ragged, weedy, dirty, tatty. But hey, low I'm, provision. Low provision. I'm not, but hey, I've got heaven. And if we, if we do that, then the devil's yeah. quite happy. Yeah. Whereas the kingdom of heaven is an adventure like those kids had in Narnia where yeah. you can see the mountains around you that you might have to mm. climb over or the hurdles that you might have to cross. Yeah. But God's given us everything we need for life and godliness, it says in yeah. 2 Peter, everything we need. So that means mm. that you can look ahead of you in this kingdom. And We had someone that got saved ages ago in our, in our first church and he said, every part of my life is illegal. So he had to just kind of get his land before him and look at this part and make it legal. Mm. And then he had to make some other choices to make this part legal. Yeah. It's possible for everyone and mm. anyone to live a victorious life, yeah. not without storms or challenges, but you've got everything you need to do that. And we should be mm. the church because that's what the people see who don't go to church yeah. should be represent Jesus better yeah. in our marriages, families, jobs, the seven mountains that we educate in our yeah, church to at the moment. Culture, yeah. And um, yeah. yeah. But what I think what we've done over the years following we believe God speaking to us about the soul is mm. is that it's not the spirit in itself that grows you. It's the spirit educating the soul mm. because it's the soul that deals with this life, the mm. mind, the will and the emotions. So to be a mature believer, you have to grow your soul. Yes. And, and we as charismatics have felt that it all comes in the spirit. You, do, you receive, we lay hands on people, rightly so. We can't do wait to it. start it again. No, no but, but <laughs> without people realizing that there needs to be soul growth, then they're gonna miss it. Yeah. And how often have we said over the years, 
when we hear preachers talk about the Great Commission, you, you say what's usually said. Go into the, all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing and make disciples. No, yeah, make disciples, baptizing them in the name, in the name of, of the Father, Son, and Holy yeah. Spirit. And it usually stops there. It usually it? stops there, but it doesn't stop there in Scripture. Because Scripture says, and teaching them to obey, obey everything. everything I've commanded you. That obedience comes on Monday when you feel like treating your partner bad. Or it comes on Tuesday when when um, you can't be bothered to put a good day shift in at work, yeah. you know, and, and your conscience is pricking you. It comes in everyday life. Jesus teaches about everyday life, and mm. that's what it is to be a kingdom citizen. And with that comes power and authority. That's it. it and with that is a restoration of dominion because... We know that God has to be able to trust your heart before he can trust you with power. Mm. And, and uh, you know, there's a lot I could say on this. I see that time is going. <laughs> but he has to be able to trust your heart. When Adam was functioning in his fullness, when he was naming all the animals, etc., he had an unbroken, if you like, umbilical cord to the Father. There was no, there'd been no Absolutely. sin. Absolutely. So he could just hear, hear directly from God and apply it. Then the fall comes. And it's a great picture because he runs away, doesn't he, and yeah, starts hiding and, yeah. and recognises I'm naked. Jesus comes, he restores the kingdom. That's right. And that, that redemption that we receive as a gift is, is meant to begin a journey that brings total restoration. Yeah. So we should, we should become something like what Adam was before the fall. Definitely. Why would, it's why a process would God from, want less than from that? glory to glory. Yeah. What does that mean? So we have to correct a few things and it starts in our yeah. thinking and then we process it. And just to say, um, as we're coming to a close here, um, to sow this thought, it's, it's the heart, above all, guard your heart. Above all else, it says, guard your heart, for out of it flow the issues of life. Your heart has to be guarded because that protects your connection. So if you don't yeah. maintain that connection, you're going to make choices and decisions that are not right. Yeah. Not necessarily sinful, but still not right. So what the human race doesn't understand, and I'm not going to cover it in the next minute or so, <laughs> is this, but I'm sowing the thought. If something's not fixed at the highest level, it's futile trying to fix it at this level. Definitely. So the world now... It's trying to fix everything. So, you know, what happened with slavery, colonization, what happens to people uh, who want to have a different gender, so on and so forth. Thinking if we solve all these things, then we're going to solve the world mm -hmm. and, and produce a, a world full of harmony. Mm -hmm. If we get universal credit into everybody's lives, we're going to have a, a world that's in harmony. Well, they don't yeah. realize if you don't fix the sin issue, if you don't fix it at the highest level, you cannot fix it cannot at this level. It. And the reason is the Bible says the heart of man is wicked. Above all. Yeah. Above all. Above all. It's, it wicked. That, it? it's wicked. It's wicked. So above all, guard that. your heart. Yeah. And, and if you guard your heart, you'll start to live by kingdom principles. And that will lead you to live in kingdom authority, kingdom uh, power, and kingdom yeah. dominion. And if ever the church needs to step up to that, Absolutely. surely after the 15 months we've been through, if we don't seize a new day, then God help us. Yeah. And I mean it, God help us. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Okay. Great stuff. We could talk about this for hours, as you can see. <laughs> I know, we're just we're, getting going. But, yeah, mm. we've come to the end of this episode. Mm. Um, again, don't forget, you can yeah. contact us on uh, our church website or social media. We can get You can get to us. And we would love to. YouTube channel, and Debbie. Yeah, Boy, YouTube yeah. channel. We would love to hear from you. If you've got any questions, get them mm. into us and we will do our best to um, answer them. God bless you and we'll see you next time. Yes. Bye. God bless. Great to be with you. Thanks for watching. Bye.